Thank you. Um, Hey guys, um, hi how are y'all doing? <laughs> hi guys. I see you guys. Um, so apparently we need a new publicist because that was our resume from 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it is where um, we met. Just to, just to clarify, um, Zach's is where we met how many years ago? Uh, we met there about 18 years 18 ago. 18 years ago. Um, we w it no longer even exists as, at a restaurant as a restaurant, so don't Google it and yeah. try to find it. Um, so we have ply. Oh, these things are. What's that? Are you getting shocked right now? No, no, I'm, I'm getting just shocked. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that yeah. Okay. If I fall, it's just because I've passed out. And I, I might laugh a little <laughs> bit first, but I'll I'll help her. <laughs> 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 um, so we're local. How many of you guys are local? And by local, I mean like within a couple of hours mm -hmm. of driving. Yes. Oh, right on. How many of you flew from across the country to be here today? Uh -huh. Oh, job. wow, nice. <laughs> to escape the cold. You're, yes? Where are you from? Vancouver yeah. Island. That's really wow. impressive. Oh. Where are you from? Mich Alberta? It's really impressive, you guys. I've met a lot. And, and Michigan. I feel like we've seen some a, a number of people from Michigan here. I don't know if it's because it's still cold there. Um, but this might be the most beautiful place in this entire country right now, right? Hopefully you guys are all getting to stay the entire weekend and enjoying. Have you started drinking yet today? Yes, well Good. Done. It's That's always two. great to be the last yeah. demo uh -huh. because you guys kind of don't even care about what we're doing right at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is my husband, Nick. Um, I've, hey. I've done Palm Desert food and, wise, food and Wine for many years. This is your first year, it is. right? I got to give me a chef coat and everything. I'm <laughs> pretty excited, yeah. <laughs> we are uh, co-chefs and co-owners, but I get all the attention because I did TV. And she does and all I'm the talking. And I do all the talking. So if he tries to talk and I talk over him, don't worry, he's used to it. Mm -hmm. And it's totally normal. So what we're going to make today, what are we making today, Mr. Roberts? Uh, we're going to make a carrot farro with a poached egg. Carrot right. farro with a poached egg. Right, correct. Very correct. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just got to check. <laughs> um, so, so this is actually a dish that we have on the menu at the triple. It's a brunch dish. And we fold in some other stuff. We have some sausage in it and some uh, truffle fontina that goes in it. And it gets topped off with a poached egg. You guys are not going to get the poached egg today. I apologize. I am going to demonstrate how to perfectly poach an egg. So, like, if that's something that you feel like you can't miss out on, I'll just be up here poaching eggs for you. But you are going to get to try the carrot farro. Uh, it is sort of a play on a risotto, almost. It is. It is. But with farro. Right. And we do work it kind of like a risotto. Uh, yeah. We are going to do a little bit different than the recipe. The recipe is is great. It actually says sweat the onion. I don't know that they even have recipes. You do guys they? Have I thought, do they not? Okay. okay. That's what so I thought. So if this looks weird, it's just because we don't follow I just, the recipes. Well, I like to toast the farro first. And the only reason we did it the other way is we sweat out the onions in the recipe first because... Just it, it'll be a little friendlier. You really have to watch it when you're toasting it. So that's just an easier way to do it. If you don't mind, I'm going to do it the way I would do it, if that's right. So I do add, I, I thought she was going to talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I do add oil. Let it heat up a little bit. And what type of oil are you using? This is olive oil, but uh, it is better also to use a canola. Not always the greatest olive oil for, or oil for you, but great for heat. It doesn't have a. It has a very high uh, smoke point. Correct? So by that he means we can get the oil really high without it <coughs> burning. Which olive oil has a lower temperature in which it burns. Um, so if you're looking to get things super hot, um, never use olive oil, especially extra virgin olive oil. Um, but in this, this case, we're not going to get things super hot. Um, it's totally fine to be using olive oil here. Mm -hmm. So as it gets as, as the oil gets hot or warmed up, we add the add the farro. And you can use barley, you can use farro. What else could you use? I mean, yeah, uh, well make sure you leave yes, that yes, last yes. Oh, tablespoon yes. of farro yes. in there. Um, so so we, we play with a lot of grains. Um, you know, we're in California. We do emphasize a lot on vegetables. We don't always feel like we need to add a protein. Grains are a great substitute to make something feel really hearty without using a protein. Um, so this dish is actually 100% vegetarian. If you were to leave the egg and the cheese off, um, you could definitely garnish it with lots of other vegetables, and it feels very hearty. It feels very rich. Um, you could add butter to it. We're actually doing it without butter, so uh, it's it's essentially a wheat berry. So if you are um, if you are 
gluten intolerant, I would I would stay away from this. But y if you actually have celiac, then you probably already know that, right? Yes, you have celiac. No, okay. <laughs> Um, so what do you what do you what are you doing over here? Uh, toasting the toasting the farro for a second, waiting. And you can smell the difference in it. I mean, you can actually just as you toast anything, you could just it gives more it gives a deeper aroma, a, a deeper flavor too. Okay, right? so while you're toasting the farro, I guess we can keep talking while you add things. I will. Um, and uh, again, they're not going to eat this, so you don't need to make it perfect. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to add onions and garlic now. <laughs> It's only a 20-something minute demo. So um, so what I'm doing over here, um, FYI, we never cook on electric burners, but these electric burners work like nothing I've ever seen before. This water just came out of the refrigerator and went into a pan, and it's already boiling, which is insane to me. So um, anyway, it's just water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to this water. I'm not really sure why it's boiling like that. Um, so I, I added about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Uh, so I actually, I work with eggs a lot. I used to be, I used to be a representative for this. Uh, have you guys heard of Davidson's eggs? They're pasteurized eggs. Um, so you can buy them in the supermarket. They're perfectly safe to eat raw. Um, as chefs, we don't cook with pasteurized eggs a whole lot, but if you're putting them in vinaigrettes, it's kind of nice to know that you're not poisoning your clientele. Um, so uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, but the pasteurized eggs act very differently. So I recommend if you are cooking your eggs to get unpasteurized eggs uh, because you can kind of predict how they're going to react. Uh, eggs, to me, are one of the most versatile ingredients in the world. You can flavor them. You can use them as a, a component. They're... Um, they absorb flavor very easily. So sometimes when I poach an egg, I put some like turmeric powder in the water to turn them yellow. Um, you can flavor the water, you can salt the water, you can do all sorts of stuff to impart flavor into eggs because they're an incredibly neutral flavor. Um, I also find that a lot of people don't add eggs to things because they're scared of how to perfectly cook an egg and it's really just a matter of timing and knowing a few, li a few, a few little tricks. Um, so poaching an egg you can do in, in a matter of just moments and adding the, uh, the vinegar to the water helps the whites coagulate a lot quicker. So you don't get those like crazy strands of white all over your boiling water. You also want to make sure that your water is not at a rolling boil. Um, one, because that enables those whites to sort of run all over the place and two, because um, and, and this goes for boiling eggs as well. If, you're, if you have your water at a rolling boil, the outside temperature of your egg is going to get so hot that it becomes dense and chewy, which nobody really wants a dense and chewy egg, right? So what I've done at this point is really just um, bring this water to a simmer. I have some eggs here. I never crack an egg on an edge. So many people crack an egg on an edge. How many of you crack an egg? on an edge, right? Because it makes sense, because you're cracking it, it would crack so much easier. What you're actually doing when you're cracking an egg on an edge is you're pushing the shell into it. So you're 100% more likely to get shell into your egg than if you were to crack it on a flat surface and just create sort of an indentation and then s gently lower it into your simmering water. And then watch what I told you was not going to happen, <laughs> happen immediately. Um, which is fine, you know, it tastes the same. It's just got these like wild eggs. So why don't you take it from here? Right, well, but there are different ways to do it if you want like just different tricks and we're doing a lot of them. We actually, in the restaurant sometimes, we will uh, take uh, plastic wrap, put it in a cup, crack the egg in there and then hold it in so it's actually like, so it's holding it together. So right. that's when we're just really busy during uh, breakfast service. Um, and there's some really pretty time over here. I don't know if that was left out for us to use, but I'm going to use it. Um, I'm going to throw that in yeah, there. Get in there, get in there. Throw some time in there. So we just sweat out the onions, sweat out the garlic. You can, I don't know if you can smell it at all, but you can smell the difference from, raw, from the raw product to the cooked product. And around now, I'll, I'll add the carrot juice. 
Um, Is it? You guys good so far? Now you have food and you're so not going to pay attention even more. We should pass out cocktails, you guys. Yes. Yeah, right? I could use a cocktail. Yeah. Anyone? No? Okay. All right. So once you've done that, now I'm gonna add are the we ready for the carrot juice? We okay, are. so this is the fun part. Gotta instead of okay. adding... Go ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so instead <laughs> of adding water, which would be sort of the obvious choice of, of liquid to cook a grain in, either water or chicken stock or some sort of vegetable broth, um, we've juiced some fresh carrots. You could buy juiced carrot juice carrot juice in the supermarket. Um, you can juice your own carrots if you happen to have a juicer. Um, but it's an incredibly lovely, flavorful um, liquid to cook. We cook sometimes pasta in vegetable juices. Uh, beet juice is a really good one to cook in. Um, but carrot juice kind of creates this sweetness that's going to counterbalance the, the cheese and the saltiness and the egg um, that we'll add later on. So we're kind of making a sweet combination of flavor that will essentially be the only liquid that is cooking these grains. True. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm, I don't know. I'm about, what, three minutes in with my crazy wild egg whites. Um, what you're looking for is for all of your e egg whites to be completely cooked. And then I can feel it when I squeeze it that it's still a completely runny uh, yeah. interior yolk. I got a thing oh over here. So I've lined a paper, uh, I have a paper towel lined sheet tray here. And, and I want to make sure that when I put this onto whatever I'm putting it on, that I'm not transferring all of that vinegary water onto whatever I'm putting it onto. So I want to dry it off nicely. And since it's hot, that water will evaporate pretty quickly. But you can see if you flip it over, look, it's such a perfectly smooth mm -hmm. egg white, right? Thank yep. you. Amazing. <laughs> um, and we good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and you can kind of handle it. You can feel it. I'll I'll leave this one for you guys to feel if you want to do a little touch and tell, touch, touch and tell. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> wrong, wrong one. <laughs> guys, those pores are so short in there. That's not why. Did you <laughs> see how long that frosé line was? Yeah, it was a must have though. I have to say, I had one. Um, okay, so I'm going to dry it off a little bit here. If you happen to be cooking for more than three or four people, I recommend pre-poaching your eggs to the point where they're almost almost to where you want them. Look the at whites that. are solid enough. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers Thanks, you guys. Tony. Thank you. Oh, it's an well, Aperol so spritz. That's so exciting. I'm That's sorry, right, Tony. Hey, cheers. 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 Thank you. All Good. right. Excuse me. All right. So you can 100% make these a couple of hours in advance. Instead of transferring them onto this sheet tray, you would transfer them into some ice water um, to cool them and stop them from cooking anymore, just as you would a hard-boiled egg. And then you could throw them back into this water to warm them up. And you could, you could do 10, 20 at a time, hold them in the ice water when you're ready to serve them, warm them up in the hot water so they're nice and warm. And then they're just like new. No. That's kind of how, that's our restaurant hack trick uh, that we do for brunch. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of numbers for brunch at, at Playa Provision specifically, and the Eggs Benedict is one of our best sellers. It's like a Dungeness Crab Benedict, and we sell, I don't know, 30, 40 orders. So if we had to poach our eggs to order, we would go down in flames and you guys would never get your food. So this is kind of our little trick to a, a pre-poach of an <coughs> egg. And then this dish, actually, I don't know, did you say it was at the triple? So yes. if you did want, you did say that. I did say oh, that. There we go. It's okay. Thank you. I Sorry. appreciate that. Thanks. People <laughs> say, how do you guys work with each other? It's really the only way we know each other, thank God, because I think he would have murdered me several times by now. I think it's, yeah, insane. It's she's, very, she's very, very patient. She married a big, big child. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's true. Um, <laughs> it is. I'm sorry, I agreed really quickly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> First time ever <laughs> that she agreed. All right, I'm going to do a few more of these, but otherwise, um, I feel like we should be moving well, a little I'm, bit quicker I'm going over here. I'm rapid boil. Again, they're not going to eat this. They've already eaten. Uh, okay, I have it all the way up. I'm okay, just, I, you don't need Smooth. to have it all the way up. How do you want it to reduce? Just finish your demo. <laughs> <laughs> So in theory, if this was all down, in theory, in theory, if this was all reduced, and we'll keep going, and I'll keep doing it, 
but I'm being told to go faster. Uh, soon we'd add the carrots to kind of cook the carrots. You can. I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna use all of them, Brooke. That's okay. Fine. Okay. We'll just so add the carrots so they don't become completely mushy. They have a little bit of a bite to them, uh, meaning they still have some texture. And then, <coughs> then we'll also add the cheese. May I add the, should I add the cheese now? Or do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> can I wait like a second? And All right. I mean, uh, if, you can, if you're going to entertain them while you're stirring, then go I, for it. I thought that was entertaining. <laughs> but, um, no? Yep. Cheese isn't on our list. Cheese isn't on your list. It you're right. It? The Parmesan? You're very right. Wow. So well, that's why we're not going to add the cheese. We're not going to add it. We just brought it up here because it's. So we don't want to confuse you further. Um, but but, we're, but, but brown your sugar's dish on your list, garnished. isn't it? Brown sugar is. So that is up to you. Again, the the carrot juice is already very sweet. We add sausage to ours at the restaurant, so we add a little brown sugar to counterbalance the the saltiness of the sausage. Um, our goal, as as chefs who are creating dishes for a menu that hopefully people will order more than once, is to create a very well-balanced dish. Because that's, one, how we can try and entertain your palate throughout the course of the entire dish so that you want to finish it, but also so that you leave feeling like, wow, that was great, I could have that again. And then, therefore, you come back and you have it again. So the only way, in my opinion, to do that is to create a perfectly balanced dish. So we have the sweetness from the carrots. We add, we have to add a salty component. So instead of adding sausage, um, we're adding cheese or um, a seasoned egg for a little bit of richness. Uh, we can top it off with, um, you know, we added some fresh herbs for some freshness in there. Uh, but because we had the sausage at the restaurant, we already had brown sugar in the recipe. And it was like a copy and paste situation, so I apologize. Please feel free to leave the brown sugar out. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. <Okay. laughs> if you are going to have it at a rolling boil or a Mach 10 boil like I have here, uh, you do got to keep it. You have to keep it moving or it will stick to the bottom because of all the starch that's going to be released from the farro. So you don't want it to burn. You burn, obviously, the whole dish goes down in flames. All right, um, so we are pretty much set here because I don't think we're going to get that to a point where uh, where we can plate it. Um, but I will show you how perfect these eggs are because I'm really proud of them. I'll, you show, you, I'll show you tomorrow how perfect <laughs> this is. <laughs> He'll be here all day. Just stirring. So, <laughs> um, all right, so basically, again, with eggs, it's it's a very per eggs are very personal. Um, I'm probably one of the only chefs on the planet who doesn't love a super runny egg. I like my eggs custardy, which is weird, right? Like, round of applause for a custardy egg. Mm -hmm. I know I, I, he's the opposite. It's like if he can have the egg virtually look like it was just cracked on top of his food without even being warmed no, up. No, no, I, I want the whites not to be runny. That's okay. the one thing. Long as I the don't think anybody done. wants their whites, whites to no, be runny. No, but I'm just saying, you got to, like, <laughs> making me seem like I'm, right, like, rocky let's eating. Let's take, the, let's take this up later. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, but basically, I prefer my eggs a little bit on the, oh, and... We want to season every step of the way, right? So we've got salt. Is this salt? Right what is that? That's sugar. Why do we have sugar? I don't here? know. But I don't know if you watch She's Right. We uh, season all the way through. You don't season just season all the way at through. the end. Yeah. So there are very few things where you don't want to season from the get go. Um, and this isn't one of those things. So basically, what we want to make sure is that every step of the way, we're, we're seasoning. And by seasoning, I mean salt basically, because food has no flavor without a, without a certain level of salinity to Did it. Did anybody go to Antonia's uh, demo? And she right. was, salt is your friend, well, butter is your friend. All true. All salt amazing. is your friend. She was saying salt is good for you, uh, which yeah, I, don't. I don't. Oh, that was it. She was saying butter is good for you. Is Antonia here? Because I don't want to talk about her behind her back, but I will. So she was <laughs> saying butter is good for you. Say it with me. Butter is good for you. I'm not asking you to say that because it's not necessarily true. But butter, a certain, it's all about balance, right? It's all about lifestyle of balance. We don't eat like this every single day. If we did, um, I don't, no, don't, don't want to talk about it, but um, we, you know, it's all about balance. So I, we're not afraid of butter. We're not afraid of salt. But at some point, we, you know, have to rein it in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to pull off these little stringy pieces. And 
You're right, I'm not setting a timer, but that was probably about three minutes. Um, did you guys, you guys ever watch that show called Top Chef? So, did you guys, did you see the episode where they brought my sister? Um, so there was an episode where there were, I think there were four of us left, and for our quick fire, they brought everyone's spouse out to Charleston to cook with us for the quick fire, and we had, we didn't know who we were cooking with because we were separated by a wall. And um, everybody got their spouse except for me. I don't know why. I don't Beca know. <laughs> because he's a chef, and they felt like it would have been really unfair to have him next to me. And we work with each other, so we know how each other works. And if I had recognized his voice, I would have been like, hey, just do it like this, and it would have been over. So instead, they brought my sister, who can't cook at all. And I decided to do poached eggs. And I said, OK, just, just put put the eggs in the wa water, and I heard her say, are the whites supposed to fly around like this? <laughs> and I was like, no, who is this chick that they found on Craigslist that's cooking next to me? <laughs> and then um, we poached eggs, and I ended up poaching mine a little bit farther than she poached hers. Hers were perfect, and mine were too thick, because I like my eggs a little bit thicker. And we don't hear about that every runner. Christmas, either. That she says hers is. <laughs> All right, so I'm seasoning these. I don't know why, since nobody's going to eat them. And then, mm. and then basically, I'll just cut into them. So this is what technically should happen. You should get the, oh, these are really oh. pretty eggs, right? Well, that, not that one. This one's that first one. So basically, we should get a runny but viscous yellow, uh, and then a completely solid white. Yeah? 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 I'll like wrap it up. Okay. okay. <laughs> this isn't going to be ready Understood. in five minutes. Okay. Well, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> yes. Sure, absolutely. You could do this with any grain. However, a quinoa is not going to give you that starch that's going to make it seem I don't know if like... You can, I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting. You can, you it can starts see to it. It re release yes. a starch, um, when, especially when you stir it. So if you were to just leave this alone and boil it with excess amounts of liquid, you could strain it and have it be like a, a solid grain. Or you can work it like this and have it release the starch. Um, quinoa wouldn't do that, um, but arborio would. Or uh, barley, you could use barley instead. Yeah. That's another one. Yes. How did we meet? Uh, we met in the kitchen. She was actually my boss, and I was wondering if he was going to say that. Yes. <laughs> what me? Yeah. If I was, you were. I my was boss. his boss. She still is. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> to be fair, there was no foul play until no. there actually, was cause for foul play. Yeah, it wasn't for a year, give or take. <laughs> and there was also. We Any other there questions? There's no nothing. <laughs> we actually, we didn't like each other for, for a good yeah, while. Yeah, we actually, I thought he was incredibly arrogant. And, um, I mean, he is, but I got used I, to I, it. I, and I it became it. endearing. Mm -hmm. um, but he called me. I was a very young chef. I was 22 years old. And as was he, but he had gone to culinary school, and I did not. <laughs> and so he automatically figured he knew more than I did. And I didn't deserve to be in the position that I was in, which is probably mm -hmm. true. But he didn't have to like say it to my face all the time. <laughs> I could have fired him, but I didn't. No. There was a lot of that. <laughs> there was and now I can't fire him, so no, yeah. we're she stuck. Puts me in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. We have a child who's sitting there. Who um, his name is Hudson. Um, he's slightly underage to be here, so let's not talk about this outside of this room. Uh, but uh, yes, one child. We planned on having more, but then we have restaurants, and we have like 100 children. So we stopped at one that lived in our house. We do. We, we do. We actually. Yes, we still have Hudson House. We just celebrated our 10-year yes. anniversary. Um, which is like a million years for a restaurant. So we were very proud of it. We did a little remodel. So if you find yourselves in Redondo Beach, please do come say hi. Um, there's a mural on the front. You'll recognize Hudson Okay. from the mural. It's also on my arm. And um, yeah, so hopefully we'll be there for another 10 at least. Thank you. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you guys. It's almost there.
Um, thank you guys for coming today. I Thanks apologize for that sitting I finished in this, this. Beautifully cooled off tent while everyone out there is sweltering. <laughs> I'm assuming that's why you're here. <laughs> so thank you guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you guys. Um, if you're coming to tomorrow's brunch, I will see you at, at brunch tomorrow. <laughs>